The killer, Adam Lanza, was just 20 years old. Friends describe him as an honor roll student, a genius, but one who kept himself. A police source who questioned Lanza's brother says the 20-year-old had a personality disorder. It's not clear what his condition may have been. Global National's Mike Jolet is looking into this part of the story for us. Just seeing the kids' pictures on the news last night was just, you know, was shaking. This was the picture that gave Jim McDade chills, the younger of the two Lanza boys, Adam, who seemed to blend in and disappear. On more than one occasion, I went over to the Lanza house um, just to watch cartoons with Ryan. Uh, we all went to the same bus stop together, but that was about the extent of how well I knew Adam. He was an enigma even to his bus driver, Marsha Moskovitz, a friendly woman who was never able to get more than a few words out of him. Just a hello, goodbye, how are you, have a good day type of thing. He was polite to me, but uh, he was never one of the kids that I was really, you know, talkative with. So what drove Adam? Why did a painfully shy 20-year-old allegedly get into an altercation with teachers at the school the day before the shooting? Why did his mother own so many guns? I want to know why his mother had five guns at his disposal. I mean, where's the, the damn gun locker? Where's, where's anything? The answers, and they remain fuzzy at this stage, perhaps lie within the Lanza family dynamic. And Adam's equally mysterious mother, Nancy, his alleged first victim. She was a stay-at-home mom who loved her kids. I, I, there's no explanation. There was. No funny business going on as far as I know. But sources suggest Nancy was a survivalist, a woman who warned of an impending economic collapse and who pulled her youngest son out of school to teach him at home. Ryan Lanza, who was briefly taken into custody outside his home in New Jersey yesterday, may be able to provide some of the answers, although he reportedly hadn't spoken to Adam in two years. Mike Drolet, Global News. Let's bring in Clint Van Zandt. He's a criminal profiler and former FBI agent. Clint, obviously the big question is why? What prompts someone to do this? I think that's always the challenge in these shooting situations. No, unfortunately, here in America, we have at least one of these a year or more for the past 15 to 20 years. Some of these may well be copycats, though. Uh, the last three shootings we've seen at a movie theater in Colorado, at a shopping mall in Oregon, and now this situation at a school, we have young individuals dressed in black carrying perhaps multiple weapons, assault weapons, almost as if they're acting out uh, as if they're some type of commando or playing a role in some type of terrible video game. But this was very methodical. How did he choose his victims? I think that's the challenge right now, too. We know, obviously, that uh, he's alleged to have killed his mother and then moved on to a school that was only a few miles from the house that he shared with his mother. Uh, there are conflicting reports of whether there was or was not an attempt by him to get into the school the day before some type of altercation. We know when he finally got to the school, he was confronted by both the uh, principal as well as teachers. You know, this is a terrible situation. If you're in the, if you're a police officer, if you're an FBI agent, if you're in the military, you're supposed to run toward gunshots. Civilians are supposed to run away. But these teachers, uh, they all put their lives on the line, and six of them died this day trying to defend their students. As this individual went in, uh, started slaughtering adults, and then moved to the two closest classrooms, which turned out to be first graders, and then methodically shot these children, we're told, with a high powered assault rifle, anywhere from three to seven shots apiece to these tender young children.